Hello everyone, Ragnello here with another episode of Monster Hunter Freedom Unite. Last time we took on the Teostra, and now today we are going to be taking on the Shen Gaoren, the giant Carapacean. So, uh, before we get uh, too much farther in, I should point out that this is uh, post-recording Ragnello speaking. Um, there was nothing really wrong during uh, recording, but I did find that it was just a little too long and the way it was just cut up with the former commentary wasn't all that good so I decided to just cut it up and then uh, do this commentary just to kind of compensate. So um, about this monster, it is a giant carapacean so it's a giant crab related to the uh, the Daimyo Hermitar and the Shogun Cenotar only it makes those two look cuddly. So I'm not kidding when this thing is massive. It is big enough to live in the skull of a Lao Shan Lung. And if you saw my, uh, I think it was in the uh, in the tanks countdown, you'd realize that the Lao Shan Lung is freaking enormous. So it, it lives in one of those skulls. And uh, fun fact, uh, the Lao skull, as well as the skulls that the Daimyo Hermitar and the Shogun Sinatar live in, they're all bigger than normal uh, skulls. So, you know, it's, it's, it's an even bigger Lao Shan Lung skull than uh, what it normally is. But um, aside from that, as you can see here, it takes forever for the uh, the Shen Gao Ren to just get out onto the field. So this is uh, just sped up as much as a normal round in uh, uh, Sony Vegas would allow me. So this is, um, I, I don't know the exact speed. I want to, I almost want to say 300%. But, you know, it, again, it takes forever. And even in the sped up footage, this entire segment just waiting for this monster to get out takes 49 seconds. It's just absurd. So the strategy with this monster is you want to go for the legs. The legs are, well, really the only part you can attack. I mean, you could go after the, the pincers, but if I recall correctly, the pincers are also really hard. So odds are you're going to be bouncing off those pincers a lot. So go for the legs as well as the uh, the legs are the things that will let the uh, the Shen Gao Ren fall over. So you uh, you just want to keep going after those legs. Those are, you know, don't don't bother going anywhere else until the uh, the Shen Gao Ren has fallen over. And so what happens is when you attack the legs and if you uh, do enough damage to each leg, the, uh, the wiki years ago described it as uh, the blood vessels. Uh, beginning to burst now the wiki has changed since then so it's that's no longer the description But for the time being in this video, I will describe the uh, the, the redness of the legs coming in as blood vessels So th this is what I mean right there and there's two levels of it The first one is a kind of a dark dull red and then the next round is much more vibrant now a in order to knock the Shen Gao Ren over and there's going to be a slight caveat to what I'm about to say here is you have to make every single uh, leg that vibrant red and then attack a leg until he uh, the, the all four legs will reset and he falls over for an extended period of time. Now, here's the caveat. Now, I didn't take note if every single leg needs to be a vibrant red or if you could just go after one leg and it will have the same effect. That So I'm not sure I need to do a little bit of uh, experimenting on that. But uh, before... Before we go too much further in, got to talk about this place here and about the, the thing I am going to fail at miserably in this footage. So we're in a town, which weirdly enough looks like a fortress, and we have to defend it from the, the Shen Gao Ren. So if the fortress's integrity gets too far down, it goes to 0%, we lose. And this is one of the methods of trying to do damage to the Shen Gao Ren. This is the Dragonator. So I completely failed it because the, the Shen Garan actually needs to be crouched in front of the Dragonator in order for it to actually do damage. So I, I'm thinking, oh hey, I still got the legs. No, that's where janky hitboxes come in. And another thing to help you do damage, and sorry if I'm going really, really fast in this, even this part of the footage is sped up by about 25%, um, even though there's a lot to talk about, this is still a really simplistic monster. So a good, uh, I almost want to say 20 minutes of this was just doing the exact same thing against this monster. So uh, what the uh, Ballista does 
is, um, and I'm basing this off of the Generation 3. So a lot of the times the stuff in Generation 3 can apply into Generation 2, which is what Free Unite is. So what the Ballista will do is a set amount of damage. And that's helpful for when you have a subpar weapon. So like a, uh, or maybe even a weapon that doesn't do a whole lot of damage. So like a sword and shield. So the Ballista is great for doing a set amount of damage without having to risk any, like say if I were to attack the pincers, it would do less damage than if I were to say it attack the leg. So it's really handy for doing that. But aside from that, the main strategy, again, is just going for the legs. Make sure you just keep attacking the legs until they turn that vibrant red and you just keep on going. And eventually he will fall over. And that is for an extended period of time if you do the, uh, if you're past the vibrant red portion. There are times where he'll just fall normally when attacking the legs, but he doesn't stay down nearly as long. So... And the, uh, the weapon of choice is quite obvious from this footage. I'm using my uh, Zura Rathalos set, so the Rathalos uh, armor, as well as my Waver and Blade. I, th I think it's blood uh, in, in this footage. But he's, he is uh, weak to both fire and dragon. And because I don't have a dragon-based weapon, I'm going with fire. Plus, it is a lot stronger. Than, it's my strongest sword overall. Even though it doesn't have as much fire element as, say, my... Uh, I think it was the Eager Cleaver, or no, I think I turned it into the Devil Slicer, but um, it more than makes up for it in the just the raw attack power. So uh, let me get up some fun facts here. I got a, got the the wiki on my my phone right now, and there there are just a couple things uh, I should point out here. And weirdly enough, this is a Generation Two monster, so he was uh, introduced according to the wiki. Uh, in Monster Hunter uh, Freedom 2, I believe. So that was not this game, but the game right before it. So this uh, Freedom Unite is an expansion pack of Freedom 2, and that's where it was introduced. But since then, it hasn't really had any uh, any limelight. Uh, he was he hasn't been in the limelight since then in the main series. He's been in a lot of Frontier, and I believe I'm seeing in Monster Hunter Online, but he hasn't really made a resurgence, which is kind of disappointing because this is, weirdly enough, it's a cool monster. Scary as hell, but he, he's a cool monster. And let's see, there, according to here, there's a way to get onto the Lao Shan Lung Skull on his back, and that is to, so when reaching a high ledge, it is possible to jump on the uh, Gaoren's back, essentially into the mouth of the Lao Shan Lung Skull after it does its acid blast. So that's pretty much its main uh, method of uh, damage output. And as you can see here, he's the, uh, the, the Shen Gaoren is down for the time being. And again, he's not going to stay down for long because, uh, well, those, those legs haven't been damaged enough. And you might have noticed, noticed this already, but those legs have an earthquake effect to them. Now, a great armor set to have against this is an armor set that can nullify the effects of earthquake. Because that, that was the number one thing that annoyed the ever-living hell uh, out of me in this quest, was just the fact that, oh man, the, that earthquake effect, it was, it's, it's awful. It's just, it's, no, I don't, I don't like it. And it, and it's so easy to be hit by it because the the range I'm not sure if the range changes or if I'm just at the very edge of the earthquake range but I just I keep getting hit hit by it but uh, one strategy you can use when if you're going after a particular leg is to keep track of the uh, the number of times the kind of the screen shakes so when the Shangaran is moving its legs and so They'll help your timing to avoid getting hit by one of the other legs as well as staying out of that, uh, uh, that earthquake hitbox. Good God. And the other strategy to take when fighting this monster, and especially if you want to, um, more importantly, uh, just succeed in this quest, is to make him flinch right before he attacks. So he's going to go up to the fortress and defy physics by clipping into that wall. I swear to God, I don't know how he does that. It's miraculous and I want to learn how to do that but uh, if you make him flinch then 
uh, if he's in, if he's just about to attack and you make him flinch, that's when he will uh, reset and then you get to go after him all over again. So mostly, I would, I want to say it's timing. You just uh, make him flinch right before he goes for the attack, and that'll just prefer uh, uh, preserve the uh, the integrity of the town, which again looks a lot like a fortress. In fact, uh, in the first commentary, that's that's what I was doing. I was I kept calling it the fortress. No, it's a town, and it, it's just dumb. But another thing that would be great to uh, bring with you on this quest are kitchen skills. So in this particular quest, I had uh, specifically two meat items, so like a uh, dragon's tail and big meat. That is um, uh, that is not a metaphor, and. What that does is it increases my max health, which will be really helpful because then I can take some hits and not have to worry about recovering like every five minutes or something like that because of these legs just just knocking me around. So he should be falling down here at any moment, but uh, while, while we wait for him to just get his, uh, get his shit pushed in here in a moment, let's see. So according to the wiki here, and I can't really say for sure if it's possible in this game, but it might be because this is the general section, it's not really game specific, but the Lao Skull should be, supposedly could be broken three times and that allows for Elder Dragon bone carves or breaks, rewards, whatever. which. I'm not sure how how valid that is, because I did get a uh, a Laos, uh, no a Elder Dragon Bone as a reward item, and I don't think I broke that skull at any point. So he should be uh, taking a nice tumble here at any second. Uh, is that it? No. How about now? Nope. Okay, he's just uh, he's just hanging out. He's just gonna go. And I know it's going to happen. Maybe right now. Okay, there we go. So he goes down, and he goes down hard. And he's going to stay down for several seconds. Uh, I, I want to say it's twice to maybe two and a half times longer than if he just falls down in a normal way. And again, this is sped up about 25% faster than normal. And as, and as a matter of fact, I have a tendency to not listen to myself as I talk. So maybe the first time I had mentioned that, I might have said 20 to 5 times faster, which obviously that's not true because, well, it's uh, it's, it's just not possible. <laughs> not not in Sony Vegas, anyway. But uh, we should be coming to the home stretch here. There, again, there's a bunch of jump cuts because uh, I wanted to, I really wanted to save time with these videos because they. Uh, any video that goes past 20 minutes, I think it's just a little too long, and because of that, um, I, ju I just want to I want to do something a little bit different. Again, it, it just want to just want to save time. And speaking of time, uh, I almost repelled this monster, but in fact, I managed to kill him with 21 seconds to spare. Should you not? And so, yeah, he is possible to kill uh, your first time around, but uh, probably don't count on it because. Uh, especially if you're a new player, then you don't, you probably don't know what you're doing, which is maybe why you're looking up a video like this, which, uh, by the way, thank you. And, uh, speaking of which, that is going to do it for me and this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to support the channel, uh, be sure to hit on that subscribe button, or if you want to check out some of my other work, uh, hitting the annotations that will be provided at the end of this video will be a great help. And... I completely confused myself by getting those two things mixed around. But uh, until next time, take care, people.